So we continue this week on Inside Eagle Nation. Catch up with the voice of the UT Arlington Mavericks. Josh Sowers joining us on this week's edition of Inside Eagle Nation. What's going on, my friend? That was good to talk to you. How are y'all? It is always a fantastic day whenever we are talking to Josh Sowers. Man, that is so nice of y'all. So, so nice. We know you're not going to be able to make the trip down to Statesboro, but talk to us a little bit about this UT Arlington club. When you look at the numbers, it's been a little bit of a tough going. 15 and 36, the overall record, 7 and 20 in Sunbelt play. But you know when you're going up against a Darren Thomas type club, you're going to be going up against a team that's not going to give in at any point in time. Yeah, this is a team that, uh, if you remember last year in the uh, Sun Belt tournament, we felt like we had a real chance to uh, make some noise. Uh, but with all the COVID, uh, the COVID seniors, the COVID juniors graduating and um, going on about their very lives, if you will, uh, we had a lot of turnovers. We had 17 newcomers uh, to the season uh, to the team this year, uh, seven of nine infielders. And it was it's it, it's been, it's been a process. There's no doubt about that. There's been a lot of tough losses, um, but the main thing, and it's been injuries. That has been the thing with this team. Um, but I will say, you take a look at uh, a, a two series ago against the Louisiana Raging Cajuns, all ru- all one run ball games. Y'all have got a good taste of Louisiana this year. Uh, so this team, they've uh, they they know what they've got to do uh, when it comes to this weekend. So uh, I wouldn't count them out one bit. What would you say this team does well? Hold on. Um, you're not, they're not going to get blown out. Uh, they're not going to let a game get away from them. And it's been the case of they've been right there, but they haven't been able to tug that string. They, again, like I said, one-run ball games. You take a look at the conference games. It was a 3-1 loss to App State Friday night. It was a 3-1 loss to App State on Saturday. And then finally uh, put it together, had a 7-0 win against App State on Sunday. You have three one-run losses against Louisiana. Uh, And then Arkansas State, uh, you know, other than that one inning, uh, when it got away from them extras, they were right there. Uh, So that's that. I think that's the one thing they do good. I think the one thing that's been rough is not taking advantage of those opportunities because those games have been so close. You've got to find a way to get men on base. You've got to find a way to bring them around. And lately we've seen Darren Thomas – um, not known for much base stealing uh, when it comes. Now we're starting to see uh, some guys take off from first that we didn't really see uh, in the first few series of the Sun Belt uh, conference season. Denny and I were talking about it before we went live tonight that it's been a lot of low scoring affairs and a lot of that is in tune to the starting pitching for this UT Arlington club. Guys that the Sunbelt Conference has seen, Tanner King, Michael Wong, Cade Winquest, what has it been about them that has really taken the next step this year? Well, that's pure experience. Uh, Tanner King is in his third year as a Maverick, fifth year of collegiate baseball. Michael Wong has, uh, you know, played Juco in his third year with UT Arlington. And then Cade Winquest began in 2018. Uh, So these guys know how to pitch. These guys have seen Sunbelt pitchers. These guys have seen Sunbelt batters, I should say. Uh, So they know exactly what they're getting. They know exactly what they need to do. Uh, So that's experience on, on that side. Now, when the season started, we had no idea that those three, that would be the rotation for these three Um, several injuries uh, brought down some guys and uh, uh, some guys didn't pan out that, uh, that they, they had slotted earlier in the season to, uh, to be those Saturday and Sunday guys. Uh, But while the results necessarily haven't showed lately uh, for those, it is a strong pitching crew on that rotation. How has David Moffat become the Swiss army knife? (laughs) <clears throat> he had a rough opening to the season. Uh, there was no doubt about it. Uh, but that's also experience. He got to throw his name out there as well, uh, coming from 2018, that when he started as a freshman and a sophomore, he was that guy that came in in eighth and ninth innings and closed the deal. Uh, and while the, his starts did not um, work out so well for him earlier, uh, that's when they said, let's switch Winquest and Moffitt. And Moffitt has been that number one guy out of the pen so far. And he has got the job done. When the game is, you've been down. He's held it that close. That's what I spoke of earlier. Is these this UTA team? It keeps everything close, even after the starter may get roughed up a little bit. You're going to see David Moffat come in because he's a known starter. He's a proven starter. He can come in and he can pitch 60, 70 if he has to. But he knows what he needs to do because he's done it before. 
offensively a couple of new names for this UT Arlington team. Zach Henry leads the way offensively for this team, a 303 average. What has this team really been like offensively this year? Uh, a lot of lefties, probably the probably the most amount of lefties we've uh, we've seen in this lineup uh, in uh, in in so many years with uh, with UT Arlington. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned new names, man, a, a lot of new names when it comes to the offense. We we don't have our Josh Manjaras, we don't have our Andrew Millers uh, anymore. Uh, but when it comes to Zach Henry, just good hitting lefties um, and some strong hitting lefties as well. Uh, Matt Lumsden, he's at the bottom with a 145 average right now, but we saw him crank out a 385 foot home run on uh, Sunday. Uh, it's just about getting these guys uh, at bats. And, and Lumsden's story, he spent three years at Clemson, never saw one at bat. His first ever at bat at UT Arlington, he ended up walking it off against Nebraska. Uh, <laughs> of all uh, Steven Saunders, power hitting lefty. Uh, you, again, UT Arlington, we're not a home run hitting team. Our ballpark is not a home run uh hitting ballpark so those numbers are going to be well slanted down low uh but for this this story it's been the lefties and then for maybe boone montgomery the experience he's really come up uh matt cavanaugh has his has had his ups and downs uh but he is starting to get back to where he should be uh but yes uh, it's it's lefty heavy for ut arlington depending on of course the starting pitcher but uh we like our lefties this year do you still hear hit it to the gaps well, uh, with turnover last year, uh, <laughs> said said student athlete is no it was not a part of the team. Uh, so uh, the uh, we kind of had a whole new, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen this before at uh, at, at Clements plenty of times that uh, sometimes you as you have with good teams, you have, some years you have good teams, sometimes you just don't have those. Well, it's the parents too. Sometimes the people that sit below you in the box, they, they're a little rowdier than what you anticipate. So we've kind of had a brand new surgence of, of parents come in and now they're doing tailgates outside. No, we had a fish fry the other day. So it, it's kind of a good group of parents right now. It's been, those have been some fun environments. So, Hey, uh, and that's what makes it all, all the fun, right? You got a brand new booth this year, didn't you? A uh, little bit. We did. Uh, we did some construction work. Uh, we knocked out a wall, added a wall, and uh, put some counter space up. Uh, we gained about, uh, uh, you know, maybe enough room to have your laptop not necessarily overhanging the counter, but you can actually maybe rest your hands right there. Uh, so yeah, we did get a new booth. Um, a uh, little bit behind the scenes note, uh, they ended up taking out our AC. So it was a little warm this last weekend. Uh, but, hey, we're going to we're gonna try to work on that for next year. But, yeah, uh, it, it was nice getting a little, little more space to spread out for the ESPN Plus games. What does this series mean for this team? I know there's a lot of conference tournament implications on the line this weekend if UT Arlington can come in and do well against Georgia Southern. But what is the mood around this team of what this weekend kind of looks like? Well, it's obviously no doubt. You look at the record; it's been disappointing, um, and it's it's a tale of two Sun Belts right now, and you can see that in the standings. Uh, but for UTA, they've never missed a Sun Belt tournament, and this is their last one probably ever. Uh, so why not keep that streak going? Uh, why not go down there on Tuesday, get a win and find yourself in the tournament. And you absolutely never know uh, at that point. Uh, and then going to Georgia Southern, it's the last weekend for these, these six seniors go out there and enjoy it. And I'm sure that's the message that league wide around when you have uh, you know, seniors, Hey, let's go out one more time, have some fun. That's pretty much what it is for UTA. Just see, see what they can do in their very last Sunbelt tournament before we uh, <laughs> hitch our, uh, hitch our giddy up to the, uh, the great West, as they say. <laughs> All right, being where you are, <laughs> good God, being being where you are, what you do for the perspective of a UT Arlington Maverick to spend time in the Sun Belt for you as a broadcaster to have been in this league, what does this experience mean to you guys? Well, it's it's been it's it's the era that I that I grew up in that I that I really got to start my career with uh, because I the only year I wasn't with the, doing doing broadcasting I was an intern with the team their very first year in the Sunboat when they started doing volleyball and basketball. Ever since then, I've gotten to uh, I've gotten to know so many fine people uh, like yourselves uh, and so many people around the Sun Belt, um, and and got to travel to some amazing places and uh, see some amazing sights. So. Uh, 
uh, it's really where I, I formed around my twenties. I'm 31 now. Uh, so it's, it's something I'm always going to be a part of me, you know, and, and they say, uh, uh, you know, when, when you have lifelong memories, uh, you know, maybe you get a tattoo. So, you know what, if I find myself down in Montgomery, you know, it might have to be a Sunbelt logo uh, tattoo on the old left shoulder, but we'll, we'll talk about that later though. But no, uh, <laughs> non joking around. Um, it's been, it's been fun and uh, we, we are going to miss it. No doubt. UT Arlington as a whole athletic department, getting ready to move on to the WAC. What's the mood around campus, the mood around Arlington to be able to make that move? Well, we're bringing back some Southland rivalries uh, with it that have now gone to the WAC. Uh, your Abilene Christians, your Stephen F. Austins, uh, your your Lamars for one year, and Sam Houston for, for one year. Uh, so we're getting those rivalries back uh, a little while. Now for baseball scheduling, our midweek games, that's going to make things – uh, kind of a nightmare uh, for Darren Thomas and the uh, coaching crew because we we already play enough Big 12 and SEC teams in the midweeks. So I, I don't know who else we're going to fill in because you can't bring in Abilene Chris, you can't bring in Stephen F. Austin, you can't bring in Sam Hughes, you can't bring in Lamar anymore. So I think scheduling is going to be a little tougher on the baseball side. But for basketball, uh, we get to see some teams that we've seen in non-con a few times, uh, Seattle, Grand Canyon, uh, and then New Mexico State, who knocked us off in the uh, basketball championship back in 2013 in, uh, in Las Vegas. So we're kind of get to see some old friends, if you will. I've got one more question. Are you still Team J? Well, you know, in the question you asked earlier about our time in the Sun Belt, uh, I had an epiphany there. It lasted about two seconds. So do I say, do I mention Jay's name? Uh, but actually, if you just recall, I said, find people like yourselves. Uh, so that should give you an answer right there. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Josh, it, it's been a blast to be able to get to hang out with you, get to know you the last couple of years. Hopefully we get to catch up either this weekend or sometime over in Montgomery, but it's uh it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it is. I, uh, I hate that we're leaving and uh, you know, life, life just kind of gets in the way of things of uh, me getting, uh, me getting down there this weekend. Um, uh, and by life, I meant money. Uh, you know, at some point I do have to work in this life at some point. <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, no, like I said, um, everybody in the Sun Belt, you guys have been some of my absolute favorites and, uh, the whack is no doubt not going to be, uh, not going to be the same. I'm going to miss everybody in the Sun Belt tenfold. Josh, appreciate you, buddy. Love you guys. Thanks, man. Once again, that is Josh Sowers, the fine voice of the UT Arlington Mavericks, one of the best people we have been able to come across in the Sunbelt Conference and being able to get to know him not only as a broadcaster but as a person, that has been a lot of fun. It uh, it don't take long to call that role. No, it, it does not. He is uh, he's something special. Top of the top. Hopefully we get to catch up with him in Montgomery because, and see, this is kind of a, Hopefully he gets to go to Montgomery without UT Arlington making it. Because if UT Arlington makes the tournament, it means Georgia Southern didn't handle business this weekend. So hopefully Josh goes without the Mavericks going. You got a bunch of supernatural forces trying to collide and figure out which one is going to push the other out of the way. But what it boils down to is that on the field, the Eagles need to take care of the Mavericks to try to catch Texas State and maybe win a regular season championship. Oh, by the way, try to firm up that resume a little bit more in the hopes of getting it at large bit if they don't win the tournament. I would think that Mercer tomorrow would go a long way in doing yeah. just that. But look, I know what the record is. I know they've struggled. I'm just telling you that that starting pitching, these are going to be three good games. Yeah. And I would not be shocked if this went a certain way. Just because I know that how much experience they have. They've got three five-year guys in that rotation. I would anticipate seeing David Moffat at least twice this yeah. weekend. Matt Novus is the other guy that they'll try to throw a lot out of that bullpen. If it's a close game, don't leave it to chance. Because Darren Thomas's programs know how to give themselves a shot every single game. We know for Georgia Southern, it's been fined away all year. It doesn't change just because the team you're playing isn't as good as you think they are. Yeah. It's it's going to be a fun weekend for Georgia Southern and UT Arlington. Again, it's moved up a day because the Sun Belt Tournament just around the corner next week in Montgomery. That means next week we will be, hopefully, hosting our roundtable of the Sun Belt Conference broadcasters started that last year where we get everybody in one room plug a bunch of microphones in, and then we just sit and talk. I don't exactly know how that's going to look yet, but thankfully the 
people at one of the hotels in Montgomery were gracious enough to give us a space. We found a table big enough for everybody, and we talked for, I think it was about an hour and a half, just about the league, about a number of things. We still had that COVID thing that we were a year into, and yeah. I would imagine that the talk is going to be much different now that a lot of the, a lot of the protocols have been relaxed or lifted getting a chance to fly and seeing how much people it seemed like we're enjoying travel again not having to worry about certain things but i know that there's still four games this week but everybody looks forward to getting to montgomery whether you're in it or not you look forward to getting a chance to see everybody and in the case of josh might be the last time we get a chance you know we might have to do when we get to montgomery on monday in the afternoon, do our podcast and then get everybody back together after dinner for a we're talking and Craig Malone's home. Uh, in on it. Yeah. I, I could see that becoming a thing. And I don't know that that one's going to have a time limit. No. That one sure does not. <laughs> if, if you want something to do for a <laughs> long time on that, wed- that Tuesday or Wednesday, that would probably be a good place to start. Again, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week for Georgia Southern and the UT Arlington Mavericks. 6.30 on Thursday and Friday. 2 o'clock, the first pitch on Saturday. We're on the air with the Cutwater Spirits on deck circle starting 30 minutes prior to each of those. But first, tomorrow night, Georgia Southern in the Mercer Bears. 6 o'clock, first pitch. We're on the air at 5.30 with the Cutwater Spirits on deck circle. Until then, for the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed, this is Colin Lacey saying so long, everybody been listening to Inside Eagle Nation, powered by Learfield, the official podcast of Georgia Southern Athletics.